Hello. I got a nice surprise in my mailbox today, and as I was carrying this back to the house, sort of squeezing it, trying to figure out what was inside it, I noticed that it came from a Chris in Taiwan, and it was contained very hard, flat things. And I thought, you know, the only Chris I've ever heard of in Taiwan is the Amatan guy. And sure enough, it was from the Amatan cutting factory, or whatever you call it, workshop. And this set of plates here, it's <laughs> very nice carbon fiber plates. This is actually a hexacopter frame that I designed. Now why in the world would I be getting surprised by something that I designed myself? So to figure that out we need to jump back to July of last year when my friend Sean, uh, who I used to fly with quite regularly in, when I lived in Japan, showed me this Amatan Quads design contest. So this is July of last year. And the idea with this contest is you can, um, well, the rules are there. So you design a quad or multi-rotor of some kind and follow these rules, submit your um, CAD files, and people will vote for the winner. And whoever wins gets the their design cut for free from the nice um, Armatan carbon fiber. Well, I didn't win the competition, obviously, otherwise I probably would have made a video about this earlier. But you can see my um, thing there somewhere. So it's not a sexy racer kind of thing. It's more of a slow um, aerial photography oriented thingy. Um, and that's the, well, some of the arrangements you could have. It could be a larger 390 size or a smaller uh, 330, is it? Whatever. Hmm, whatever, I can't remember exactly what the size of it is, but um, yeah, so that's that's what I entered and I even though I didn't win I was quite happy to have Done that because it gave me some incentive to learn using the QCAD program And I really like that program and I actually ended up buying it after uh, I used it for a while because I liked liked it so much so anyway um after that I moved back to New Zealand and when I moved I couldn't bring pretty much all of my LiPo batteries had to stay behind in Japan when I left. I was only able to bring three of them on the plane with me in, in the, you know, in the um, carry-on luggage. So all of my other batteries I, I gave to Sean when I left. And apparently he's been trying to think of a way to um, repay me for that and over the last few months he's cunningly bit by bit extracted from me the necessary information to have these plates cut by the Armatan Productions um, service, I suppose you might call it. So he's, he's figured out, <laughs> he, he got me to give him the plans for my thing and my home address where to send it and made sure that he had all the parts necessary and everything. Um, so that's what he's done to um, kindly pay me back for um, having all those batteries. Uh, so this Armatan Productions website, I'm not too familiar with ex exactly how it works, but it seems like you can design a frame and you need to obviously make the um, QCAD files or, or some kind of CAD files and then you can upload them here and people can buy your design or an Armatan will cut the carbon plates and they'll also put it together with the hardware the spaces and the screws and things as well I gather although I'm you might want to ask Sean about that or <laughs> he probably knows more more than I do uh, anyway so yeah so that's where this kit has come from and it is exactly as um, where are we that picture is not very easy to see oh yeah so I actually went to the trouble of printing it on paper and putting it onto cardboard just to check that everything was going to line up properly um, and it works out fairly well so it was designed to take either one or two 2.23 cell uh, batteries so one either in the middle or two on each side it could probably fit as well and to run with um, five inch props as well uh, so um, yeah I'll, I'll where are we here we are so we have a big main plate there that is three millimeters thick and when I actually get get my hands on it now that I can physically touch it and try and bend it 
Uh, I'm thinking that this could have easily been two millimeter and it would have been just fine. Um, what else do we have? These are the legs, or the arms rather, and they're three millimeter as well, and they probably need to be three millimeter. And we have some other pieces here which are 1.5 millimeter, and these are the tray for the flight controller, and the tray, tray sort of a uh, strap attachment thing for the battery to go on the top although you could arrange these the other way around as well it depends how you want to put the spaces between them and then these other bits at the bottom are 1.5 millimeter thick and they are just supposed to be a uh, mounting plate for a gimbal to be hung underneath and do I have that picture still or is it so I was sort of thinking of having the clean plate sitting on top of the um, arms instead of being slung underneath it. And the idea with that was, uh, I think, so it's a while ago now, but I think the intention was to keep it very broad so that there would be very little um, rotational movement between the clean plate and the um, dirty section. Um, and what else was the point of that? Oh yeah, if if the bobbins were to all come unstuck, I haven't checked this of course, but if the bobbins all popped off, I think this clean plate would stay inside this cage at the at the bottom so it wouldn't go flying out and just you know fall separately somewhere else. I think I, I don't know. I'll have to put put it together and see exactly what happens. Um, so I have plenty of spaces and screws and I actually bought all of the motors for this because I was going to make it out of plywood um, and I just never really got around to it. So um, now I can do it with the uh, the genuine carbon fiber. So let me put this together and um, have a look at what it comes out like. Okay here it is assembled or mostly assembled. The arms crisscross across each other and you just have these six standoffs to connect them to the top plate and it's all very very nice and the tolerances are very very finely done um, so it fits together really well and it's very sturdy I like it. Um, so the top plate has a bunch of holes on it and they are for the purposes of obviously these large holes are for things like that with the um, what do you call it antenna mount that does not focus you, you know what that is eh? <laughs> yeah anyway um, there are also some places for putting XT60 holder thingies like that and these other two holes that are dotted around the place like that are for a GPS mast that I have somewhere but I can't find it at the moment but you could put a GPS mast on there and it will be nice and secure. Um, so I measured that out for the, the mast that I have. Um, and the plate in the top here is for the battery. So that would be like this and there's sort of a Velcro strap indentation there. So that would go there and then you'd plug it in like that. Strap it down of course. Um, this is probably the battery I would use with it, at least for starters. The plate in the middle is where the flight controller would go. There's a number of ways you could arrange these two plates in the middle, but this is probably the way I will do it because it puts the flight controller and all the wires that are going to be sort of jutting up on the top of the flight controller. They won't be too sort of exposed. And it also means the battery can just be slapped on and off like that quite easily. But you could also arrange it a little bit differently to that. Uh, you could put this plate that's on, on the bottom there in the middle, you could bring that up to the top and could you put the battery in there? Oh, you could actually, <laughs> but that would be inconvenient, wouldn't it? Because you've got to get in there and change it. But I think the way I have it here is probably the most sensible way. Um, so the motors are, the motors I'm planning to use are the DYS1806 motors, the nice cheap gold ones. Uh, they're not always, they don't always seem to come out of the factory perfectly so I've had a few bad ones that I had to get replaced but when you get a good set they are pretty pretty decent batch, um, 
motors for the price. And the props that were intended to use for this are 50 30 um, 5 inch props. And you could actually fit a 6 inch prop on here, no problem regarding the standoffs. That's that's fine, but you couldn't fit a normal six inch prop. Well, the neighboring prop is going to be a problem if you're using six inch props. That's that's what I'm saying. Uh, I did, did notice before though that these six inch props, these are the King Kong 6040 props, and I just cut the tips off them a few months ago to fit them onto my woody version three quadcopter. And these ones will actually go on there and they'll fit although I'm not sure how that will work for air currents and sort of the uh, what's it called the vo tip vortex or whatever you have there I'm not sure if it's gonna be a good thing or a bad thing but uh, I'll give that a try and see what happens <laughs> so you could just trim a tiny little bit off your six inch props and that would be interesting at least they're not gonna hit the props are not gonna hit each other that's uh, you'll have other problems perhaps so this um, clean plate is designed to fit onto these other larger holes with damping balls like that or actually maybe I can't quite remember what damping balls I was intending to use with this it's, uh, it's about nine months ago that I was working on this but these ones that I have are a little bit sort of loose when I put them in the hole um, but anyway so the damping balls will connect this plate to the to the main frame except it'll be inside like that so it'll be it'll be sitting on top of the damping walls and pressing down so this is upside down now right so it'll be it'll be riding in there and there's just enough room to clear well actually there's plenty of room to clear the um oh Damping balls are going to make it about that high, right? Yeah, so there's there's enough room to clear that middle plate without touching it. Uh, and I only have three of them on here at the moment because I imagine that as soon as you put more than three on, well, as soon as you put all six of them on at least, you, you won't be able to get this plate in there very easily. Because at this point, this arm or this tab is going to be obstructing there so that's a little bit of a nuisance so it means you're going to have to have three of them on like that put it in and then when it's in there attach these other ones um, but I think you're going to have to use six because these damping balls are pretty small and the gimbal that I have has huge damping balls on it although they are damping balls that are holding the gimbal from above these ones are going to be sort of supporting it from below so they might not need to be so big because of that reason and also because there's six of them instead of four but all the same I don't have a whole lot of confidence in this damping ball clean plate system but I will give it a try um, and the other thing is like I say they're a little bit loose in there not not terrible, but uh, a little bit looser than I would like. Uh, what else is there? Oh, so the uh, ESCs I'm going to use are these ones here, the um, good old Blue Series 12 amp, and I'm going to try putting BL Heli on these ones this time because apparently they do BL Heli quite well, according to Oscar. Oscar told me must be true. So, um, I think that's about all I'm going to say for this video. So, I'll be putting this together in the near future, and hopefully I can find that GPS mast, and um, take it for a fly. So, thank you, Sean. This is a, a great idea. I'm very, very happy to see this um, in the flesh, because I did put quite a bit of time into it at the, um, at the time of that competition, just, you know, making sure everything was going to fit and double checking everything and it's um it's paid off i guess it's uh, everything fits together just nicely and everyone else thank you for watching oh just before i finish this is the other configuration that you can arrange these plates in 
and this will make it a 390 sized hex and um, I guess you wouldn't be using any gimbal with this one it'd be a bit, bit more of just for fun flying around or acro or something like that um, but anyway that's that's how that works <laughs>